Hi everybody, today I'm going to go through the process of actually creating a project and setting it up for flight before you get out on the field. First thing I'm going to do is go to new project in the top right section. Here I'm already going to see my current active projects, but if I don't have a new one, I can either create one while I'm in the field on the controller, or I can just do it here now and get my map set up. First thing I'm going to want to do is type in the address. I can click create project here. It's going to give me a default project name based off what I've typed in. And then it's going to give me the most likely coordinate system for my area. Next, I'm going to be able to go through the capture types. So you have a standard map and model, facade flight, corridor map. Then you get into your media. So you have your panorama option your video option, or your photo report option. Let's start with standard map and model. So it's going to give you a default square to start. Then what you can do is move these corner nodes to start outlining the area of interest. I like to use the nodes at first to just give me the largest amount of coverage. And then in between, you can click the plus button to add more nodes to hone in and actually shape this model. Now, we'll do all the processing of understanding how to actually fly this and where the drone needs to map in which direction to actually get this done. And all you need to do is outline it. So going through the project, great. So now here, I have my map. I'm going to be able to look on the left side to understand the flight altitude of how I want to fly this. It's suggesting a under 250 feet. All of our reports on high accuracy are all going to be based off a 200 foot altitude. I ideally like to fly at this height if I can, because you're able to maximize both the distance you're able to cover, the time you're able to spend on site, as well as having a close enough scenario where it, each individual photo, you're actually able to see what's in there. So Enhanced 3D, it really depends on what you're trying to fly. If you're in pre-construction and you just need a nadir overview of pretty much a flat site, then you're going to be able to turn this off. But if you have a particular structure that you're trying to capture, then you can even break up multiple missions to just capture certain things on that site and, and then upload it into one singular map. Here for Enhanced 3D, Let's say, for example, I wanted to capture the school in higher resolution to where there are more oblique angles. I could draw right around this school, click Enhance 3D, and then it's going to change the angles of which captures are taken. Here, you can see how much time it's going to take. This current map is going to take 11 minutes. It's going to be a 52-acre site. It's going to be 430 images, and it's going to take me one battery. In the event that the flight would take multiple batteries, what would happen is the drone would actually stop and pause wherever it's about to run out of battery, return to the home point that you took off from, allow you to swap out the batteries, and then it will return to the last known point that it was at, being able to keep the mission going. And now before going to advanced, I'm going to show you a couple other options, but Enhanced 3D must be turned on to show you them. So under advanced, I'm able to keep my automatic settings or turn them off. Now you're able to see the front overlap, side overlap, which I can now manipulate, but if you don't necessarily know what you're doing, I don't recommend messing with the automatic settings. These are all definitely very specific needs. We can provide other training specifically on these. So for the capture obliques, it's adding in extra angles at the return to home and the beginning captures. Perimeter 3D is adding in more captures on the perimeter so you can get a better side profile of the overall site. Crosshatch is the pattern of which it's flying, as you can see here. Next, moving on, you have airspace and lance authorization directly through the app. Here, I have no authorization required, but if it did give you a mark where you needed to get some authorization, here you're able to go to request lance, which will bring you to the AirHub portal. Here, I have a lance notice to confirm my information. and click confirm and my request has been submitted successfully. 
Here, you'll be able to see the outline of the map that I created. Lance authorizations, it's gonna show me the compliance. If it detects conflicts, I'm able to see these. In this scenario, I've already created a separate Lance authorization, which conflicts with this original one. I'm good to go on either side. And if I wanna delete this, I can do so as well. Here, you'll be able to see all your operations that you've created in the past and the schedule time is which you plan to execute them. Moving back in, when you have authorization, you'll actually be able to see it within the Airspace and Lance authorization tab. I wanna create a facade plan. Let's take, for example, this facade of this building. I'm able to use the two nodes to detect where the actual facade sits and the path that the drone will fly is actually offset from the actual face of the building. Here I can see there are no obstructions and this is the flight path that the drone will take. To view this in a vertical view, I'm able to see the travel altitude, where it will start, and how the drone is planning to fly towards the down side of the lowest altitude, which I've also set. If I want the structure height to start at 50 feet and then the lowest altitude to go down to 10. It doesn't recommend going lower because you do not want your drone really flying at anything lower. Something as simple as a car or a person walking by could really become a dangerous scenario. Now capture distance. So this is the distance away from the marked facade. If I'm moving in, here you can see the flight plan adjust. And then the same goes for the airspace and lance and RTK coverage. Moving on to the corridor. So this is for scenarios such as highways or you know, you're gonna do some utility work through a specific area, a plot of land. What's great about this is you actually have the ability to add bends, but for the sake of this one, I'm just gonna go in a straight line. Here, I'm gonna set the flight altitude at 100 feet. Now the corridor width is also important. If you start making this corridor width, which is the actual path that you're flying, larger, it will add more flights back and forth for you to be able to capture the entire corridor width. If I'm going to 20 feet, you can see it all will take is a single flight at the 100 foot distance. Moving on to the media. Panoramas are quite simple. All you're doing is selecting the singular location in which you want the panorama and then the height that you want it captured at. Panoramas are great for just getting a 360 view of the entire area and you're able to create multiple of these and chain them together when you're actually out there capturing. 150 feet, five minutes, 26 images, one battery. Moving on to the video option. So if I'm looking to do a video at the end of the project and I wanna to start towards the beginning, or I just wanna show the owners my weekly progress, I'm able to create a video mission. Now, a couple known points that are different than the other ones. This green marker is actually gonna show the direction that the camera should be facing. If I want the video to start here, but I want it to all face this direction, then wherever I place this is going to change the direction of where the camera is facing. Next, for focal altitude, you're gonna to wanna to be able to understand the height of the structure. So if I choose 100 feet, the camera is going to tilt and face in that direction at 100 feet would be. This is all going to affect what actually gets shown in the frame. The best way to ensure what you're gonna do is to do a test flight, have an idea of where that building will end up, and then make sure you can keep that same exact path throughout the entire project. Capture quality. So then you can look at HD versus 4K. This is all preference. So moving on to photo report. Photo report is very similar in the same, in, in the same instance that you're gonna set nose and set focal altitude. So if you'd like to keep this same type of map for a photo report, you can click these three dots and then you can just duplicate it as a photo report. Also in these settings, you're able to rename or duplicate any of these other maps as well. If you create a photo report, you're able to duplicate it as a video report as well. This is a very simple handy to know tool so you're not reinventing the wheel every time. So now we've gone over all the basics of the flight plans that we're gonna be executing in the field. Stay tuned and actually watch us go capture these. Now we are on the automated flight portion of the tutorial. You're gonna to wanna to find your project here. I'm looking at the map plan. If you want to make any adjustments in the field, you're able to do so as well. Or you can fly it exactly how it is. Here will give me the time, acres, images, and battery that it's going to take to complete this mission. 
I can click the pre-flight checklist. If I don't have RTK signal, I can turn it off and continue anyway using the PPK correction option later on. I'm able to click start flight in the bottom right and the drone will begin its mission and it will start at its starting point following the path that it has mapped ahead of you. Here we're able to see the entire drone map ahead. If you want to click to your camera view you're able to see what it's capturing as well. The process of taking these overlapping photos to create a 2D and 3D output is called photogrammetry. Now the drone, as you can see in the top right, has 127, 140. These are all individual photos that are overlapping to create this end result. Now, what you're able to also do is turn on the photos to see where individual photos were taken. You can look at your elevation and contour line data. And if you select into each of these, you can get the high resolution single photo that was actually taken in that location. Now the drone is reaching its endpoint to where it's going to return to home once completed. In the top right, you can see the map plan, how many photos have been taken, and where the drone physically is at in regards to your location. This total mission took 12 minutes and 21 seconds. Next, it'll prompt you to upload, which you can do later with the SD card in the computer. And now you can move on to your next mission. Our next mission is going to be a panorama plan. Now the drone is going to go into a central location where it will take 26 individual photos to stitch into a high resolution panorama. Just like before, the drone is now returning to home and landing on its own after the panorama photo is completed. Next on the mission list, we're gonna to move to the photos plan. Here, I have the altitude set. We're gonna fly at 150 feet. And the drone is going to fly the automated path, taking a photo at each one of those nodes that are placed. If you wanna add multiple missions together, I can click add and add the video plan in addition you'll see in the queue, the bottom right, that's there as well. Drone's initializing, and it's off. The best part about these media missions is the fact that they're repeatable and consistent every single time, and to actually execute them takes very little time. Here, this photo plan is only a minute and 51 seconds. It's descending to the new height that I had to set at. Calibrating the camera focus, and it's on its way. So here it's begun doing the video portion, stopping at each one of these nodes, but it's shooting a continuous video the entire time. So, certain times, you may run out of battery while doing missions. You're able to actually do a battery swap. Then, when the battery is swapped, it will turn green and you're able to continue flight. If at any point you need to pause, you can hit the pause button in the right corner and play it to continue the mission. If at any point you want to end the mission early, you can hit the return to home button in the top left corner to have the drone return exactly where it started. Now for the corridor map. Essentially, it's just gonna be going in straight lines in all the node points that you have. These are great for highways or if you're doing specific utility work. Now we're going to get into the vertical facade flight portion of the tutorial. Here I want to go to the capture plan under vertical. 
I want to set a travel altitude, structure height, and the lowest altitude it can fly, as well as the capture distance off the wall that we've marked out. Starting here, pre-flight checklist. It's going to run through the permissions. I'm able to hit start flight, and it's going to go. Now the drone's going to make its descent to the first location and then make its way up the side of the building. Your end result is going to be a 3D model, which you can also view into the individual photos using the inspect tool. If you want to create an issue, you can create any issue that's going to be held in both a 3D model and those individual photos. Now those are all the flight capture modes, both mapping and media. Finally, let's move on to the uploading portion. Now you're back in the office, you take out the SD card from the drone, you plug it into your computer, and then you go to the upload tab. Here, I'm just gonna drag and drop all the captures from that day. Using the smart uploader, it's gonna be able to discern the different types of captures from that site. First thing I'm gonna do is start reviewing. So you'll see next to the map plan, for example, there's a pointer, and it's gonna let me know that this map will be processed using PPK. If I need to adjust the parameters of the site, I can adjust that here. Most of the time, whatever you've flown is automatically gonna be set. Also, if you wanna add GCPs, here's the place to do so. Or you can add project level GCPs in the settings that are attached to every single map brought through the system. Next, I'll hit upload and it's gonna give me a queue on the right side. Once that's done processing, a few hours later, all your data will be visible on the Drone Deploy app.